All right, welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Elliot with Rickety Ski Reviews, and today we're inside because it is raining and miserable outside. We're gonna talk about ski boots. I went through my whole experience of buying the ski boots. I finally landed on a ski boot that I thought was perfect, and today I'm gonna go through with you and talk about how do I customize my ski boots? How do I get them to fit and kind of break them into my foot? So we're gonna go through all of that, and I'll kind of run you through everything A to Z that I do to get my ski boots ready. Now I just wanted to give you guys one final update on the kind of ski boot saga. I ended up buying the Atomic Hawks Prime, which is the wider version, in a 120 in the like base S version. But what happened was I was sent a pair of skis with marker kingpin bindings by Black Crow to test out and then I'll return them. I don't have AT boots, so I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll just upgrade my Atomic Hawks boot while they're still on sale. I'll return the ones I bought, get another screaming deal, and then I'll just have like a nice boot that I know I like, and I'll just get the AT version so I can test different skis, especially as I start to test and review more skis for this coming winter. But what happened is when I finally got those boots, I tried them on, and they felt awful. They like grabbed my ankle in a weird way. They really hurt on the sides. The flex didn't feel good. When I flexed the boot, they squeaked. They made like a really concerning squeak noise every time I loaded it with a little bit of pressure. Those boots are the exact same boot. It's called the Atomic Hawks 120 Prime. And then one's like XTD and one's S. They're, they're supposed to be the exact same boot, but one's a Turin version and one's the base version. And they're not the same boot at all. They fit completely different. The Touring version felt awful on my foot. So just as like a warning to anyone out there, if you're looking at getting like a normal version versus an AT version, you need to try both. They're not the same boot and they felt totally different on my foot. Now it could have been that I got someone else's return and they've been kind of broken in maybe. I'm not sure what happened, but it was really concerning. And what's even more surprising is this wasn't even the only version I tried. I tried the Atomic Hawks Prime 130 touring version in the shop. And I liked it. It fit better than the 120. So I don't know how 10 different flex in the same size boot can feel that different, but it did. It did not feel good. So full disclosure, if you're out there, make sure you try every boot. You cannot just assume that something is gonna fit because even within like the same boot, a touring version or non-touring version can feel totally different. So just wanted to give you guys that little update. Let me show you my boots and what we're gonna do to them today. All right, so here are my boots. If you remember right from my other video too, I got these for 370 I found an, another company that was selling them really cheap and then Evo price matched and went down 5% and then I had Evo bucks so I got them like 310 total which is crazy these are 2023 boots they're the same as 2024 they're still brand new just different color it was a great deal my old boots just need to be replaced get rid of all this plastic open them up so we can put them on now here's the first thing I do with these boots I take out the liners, okay. set the shell to the side. I always put on the spoilers, and I know with testing these out that these feel better, but I always at least try the spoilers because they almost always feel better on my foot. They put my foot in kind of a comfortable position, but all, more importantly, they get my kind of shin more into the toe and kind of have me ready to flex the boot. It just makes it feel like it's a more responsive way to start your turns when you're already kind of in a little bit of a forward stance. So here we got the spoilers. They come with pretty much every boot that you buy. They got some Velcro on the back and you just attach them here. Try to line it up squarely and boom. There we go for that one. And then if you ever wanna know how to like get these liners back inside of the boot, what you do is you just take your two fingers, push them down on this heel and then push it down by the heel, locks in perfectly. So great, we've got spoilers for that one. We'll do the next one really quick. Now the next thing I'm gonna have to do off screen is take my booster straps off of my old ski boots. And here you can see I've just got like a basic Allen wrench. I actually went into Home Depot and got this hardware myself. And then I'm going to transfer the booster straps onto my new boots. Now, if anyone can tell me why this is such a pain in the butt, if you look at this one, easy, right? I can just loosen and tighten it because I did it myself. Here's how they come. <laughs> you have kind of these cap nubs and the only good way I found of getting rid of these is by actually going and taking a drill and just drilling it out, stripping out the metal, and then having the empty hole. If you know a better way, please let me know because this is just the bane of my existence. Booster Strap has no information on how to do this. They just send you the strap with no hardware. My God, if Booster Strap didn't have such a good product, I would never deal with this. It's so frustrating, so annoying, but by God, does it feel good on your foot to have a booster strap 
versus just the default. This is garbage as far as I'm concerned. This is total nonsense. Booster strap is where it's at. It will basically kick you back after you flex to kind of recoil and get you back into a standard position. It also has a smoother flex in the boot. Really, booster strap is like, God, and I'm not sponsored by them either. They should be sponsoring me because I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired of plugging them for free. You know what? I'm here for you guys first. This product rules. Go out and get it. It's absolutely awesome. And I make no money from telling you that. So off camera, I'll have to fix that. That's kind of the second piece of customization that I do. But more importantly now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on these boots and wear them around the house. When I edit videos, I wear these. I'll try to wear these at least three days before the winter just to kind of break them in and get them molded to my foot. There is nothing worse than going with a brand spanking new pair of ski boots and just being in misery because your boots are uncomfortable. They take time to break in, so wear them around your house, wear them while you do kind of mundane tasks, try to keep them on the carpet, and really that's the best way. And actually when I called the guy at Evo, he was saying that wearing your ski boots is actually the best way to break in. You can do kind of the oven thing where it warms up the plastic and molds your foot. But he was like, you can do the same thing just by skiing in them. Is it super comfortable? No, but. So the way that I expedite that is just wear them around the house. Wear them around the warm house, let them kind of mold your foot and break them in the old fashioned way. But boy, you will save yourself a lot of pain and suffering when it comes to your first day on snow. Yeah, see these rivets? There's nothing, there's no good way to get these out. And Booster doesn't even give you this hardware. <laughs> God, I feel like I'm losing my mind. So let's put on our ski boots so we can start breaking them in. So if you're ever getting your boots on and you're having a hard time, to anyone who might be new or just has never seen this, here's a trick. Take these two pieces of plastic right here. See how they kind of separate? My hands in the way. Yeah, see how they kind of separate? Just pull those two little flaps aside and your foot should slide right in. Just like that. Perfect every time. I can't tell you how many people don't know that. So see, now this one's a little stuck. Just pull these two flaps to the side, lift up on the tongue. Bob's your uncle, you got your boot on. Is it a little awkward? Will people think you're weird if they see you in your ski boots? Sure, but what's the alternative? You're in like a ton of pain the first day of skiing. Also, like I said before, if you don't try on your boots and you just show up on the hill, not only is it gonna hurt, but once you put those boots on snow, you really can't return them anymore. At least the shops I work with. Give yourself a chance to find any issues now so that you can return them if they're not a proper fit. I'm just gonna wear these around, put on some booster straps, and this is how I prep my ski boots for the coming season. Actually, I am gonna show you how to do the booster straps. <laughs> Why do it off camera, right? Do it, let's install the booster straps right now. The hardest part about this, honestly, is just getting the old one removed. Now, you'd think it'd just be like a standard bit that you could screw and unscrew. No, it's like a bolt. You have to literally drill through the back of it. Now, the first thing you wanna do is get a clean area so you don't upset the person in your life. <laughs> you can see I melted a hole right in the plastic. Usually the bit gives out. The friction just made the hole so hot. I don't think it's a big deal. I should be able to plug it, but dang, why do you guys make this so hard? Why can't this just be a bolt on the outside? Anyway, I probably messed something up, but it is frustrating that it's so hard. And this is the way that Booster Straps recommends getting these off. Live and learn, we'll figure it out. All right, now, the Booster Strap website suggests doing this with your drill bit into the back of it. But honestly, what's happening is, it's just heating up the plastic so much that the whole circle around it is completely melting through. Which I don't want, because the new one has to have something to grip onto. We're gonna take the boosters off of the old boot. All right, now we got this half of the screw. We gotta fish out the other half, and then we'll be ready to put it onto the Atomic. I'm gonna test it out and make sure that it actually works first before I go stripping out the other one. Because the only way I could do it was for the plastic to melt, which is insane. Okay, we got one screw in so far. The holes don't quite line up from the length, so we'll have to figure that out. So let's just go one at a time for now. Okay, I finally got the booster straps on my boot. What a nightmare. The holes are barely big enough. And then these screws that they give you are straight up too long. Like when you do it, it doesn't meet in the middle. The hardware is too long. My just janky used laying hardware fit the Atomic better than the ones Atomic gave me. Why do they make this so hard? It's like the most important improvement for your boot and it becomes a nightmare to do. I, at least I think I got this one down. I've got literally all of my tools out. This one, I don't know what this tool is called, but somehow I use it for literally every job. Look at this. This should be so easy. 
Also important step, make sure you wipe down the inside. Well, I never figured out a better system, so I guess I just have to drill it and hope that not too much of the plastic melts away. I even looked up, I looked up on Booster Strap how to do it. I looked up on YouTube. That's literally the only way they show is just to drill through it and melt it down. Um, maybe not melt down the plastic, but to destroy the metal. I'm sure there's gotta be a better way to do it, but I have not been able to figure it out. And again, this is not sponsored content. I went out, I paid my own money for these boots. I tried them on all myself. Nobody paid for this, nobody is sponsoring me. I saw a lot of comments on some of my boot videos saying, oh, well, you just don't like Technica? What the heck, you just like everything Atomic? It's like, no, I like Technica. I think they make nice stuff. And like, same for some of the Solomon boots, the Nordica boots, this is just what fits my foot. Anyway, I just wanted to clarify that. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I just get what fits right. I've been on Lang for like 20 years. I really like Lang as well, but these felt a little bit better and the newer Langs for whatever reason gave me some weird pressure on the outside of my foot so yeah I don't I'm not sponsored by anyone this is just what I like the last kind of myth I've heard is that you can take a warm bath and put your ski boots on and then mold your boots to your feet that way now I actually wouldn't recommend this I don't think it's a good idea one because you're just getting your boots soaking wet there are two main things that are gonna form your boot to your foot. One is pressure, right? Like pressure on where you flex the boot, pressure like kind of packing out the foam. And the other is heat, getting that plastic to kind of mold around your foot. You can get that heat just from the friction of flexing the boot and skiing. As far as like taking it in the bath and having the plastic slightly warmer, one, there's a good chance you could damage your bathtub, which really isn't worth it. The second is that once you put your boots into the bath, now you have wet boots. You're not gonna wear it the next day. The best way, in my opinion, is just wear these three to five days and wear them for long periods of time, like an hour or two. Do it while you're on the computer, maybe while you're doing some work that you can kind of sit for a little bit, watching a movie, whatever. But break them in the old fashioned way. It's probably not, as far as I know, gonna damage the boot, unless the water is like extremely warm, but the payoff isn't worth the downside. What I would do is just pick five nights in a row to just wear them each night while you watch a movie for an hour or something like that and break them in the old fashioned way. And that way, when you do finally get to the ski hill, they won't be painful on your feet. There is nothing worse than being up on the mountain and then finding out they're not formed to your foot yet. Don't waste your first few days of skiing being in pain in your boots. Try them on, wear them, make sure that you can return them if you need to, but really wear them in so that you can get them to form to your foot. So now we finally got our boot completely upgraded. We've got the spoilers here in the back, and then we've got our booster straps on here. I swear boosters should sponsor me, I talk about them so much, but really, these make a huge difference. See how instead of Velcro, you've got these little bands of rubber? These give you kind of feedback and a nice even flex when you flex it. I love the spoilers in the back, it brings my foot more forward. I know this content's a little different from what you might be used to, especially the setting, but I think it's helpful for people because there's nothing worse than having painful first days of ski boots. Take the time, wear them three to five days prior, really break them in the old fashioned way. And even though it's a little odd, I hope it was helpful to you. So now you know the best way to get your boot ready for the season. Get whatever spoiler thing you need in here, get your booster strap upgrade. I, I promise you this will really feel a lot better and break your boots in. You don't need to go in the bathtub, just wearing them in your office or on your couch is more than enough to get them broken in. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, please feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, just thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.